Pat, <laughs> you know me so well. I can't believe. It. <laughs> no, exactly. It's true. Well, yeah. I mean, I you know, look, face it. I'm 46, and this is what I grew up was in the 70s, and these. The, I I was so excited to get here, and then once I got here, I was like, wow, because. Uh, these are my cartoons that I grew up with. It's really cool. And we're talking about, you know, like the Jackson 5 cartoon and uh, the Star Trek cartoon. And, of course, Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids, which was uh, such a great, you know, positive thing for, for kids who watched it. Uh, it, it, it was, you know, just every week we got a, got a different lesson from Mr. Cosby, so that was always fun. Or Dr. Cosby, I guess we should say. But, uh, yeah, that's what it's called. It's Funky Turns 40, Black Character Revolution all about the uh, black characters in animation throughout the 70s. And uh, to talk a little bit more about it is the curator, is uh, Pamela Thomas. And thank you so much for having me. I'm having a ball talking to you about this this morning because um, these are what you call you, you, the celluloids or the cells of the actual cartoons are part of your collection. Yes, thank you for having me this morning. Yes, uh, this is a part of a collection that we have at the Museum of Black Funk, Funk uh, which houses our, uh, all of our collections from the 1970s. And we were very fortunate enough to approach the uh, Schomburg and tell them about our collection, and they just made this happen. So we're very excited. And you have, I mean, some of these great characters we were talking about. I mean, and then there's others that I forgot about. Like, I forgot the Muhammad Ali cartoon, which I don't know how I could forget Muhammad Ali, but uh, I did that when, once you reminded me and I saw the, uh, I was like, oh, that's right. You know, so, uh, and even, uh, of course, the Harlem Globetrotters yes. and Martin Luther King Jr. even is animated. Yeah. Yes, there were a lot of cartoons, um, over, uh, I would say about 29 cartoons that were produced during this time period. And what we've done is uh, collect all of the cells from these cartoons. Now, we do have one cartoon that we were not able to source, which is C-Lab 2020. But in this uh, exhibition, you'll find a number of cartoons from the, from the 1970s. Yeah, so, yeah, and we were talking a little bit about uh, the representation of uh, African Americans in animation prior to this, which was, as you said, in some cases derogatory, uh, very caricature. Yeah, yeah um, and this is what makes this so cool, because if you know anything about the cartoons prior to the 70s, all of the uh, uh, cartoons that had black images in them, they either had uh, exaggerated lips, elongated faces, or bulging eyes. And this was the first time that young children could see image-affirming cartoons or characters of themselves. So this is a great opportunity for people to come out and see all of these positive characters that for the first time appeared on television in the 70s. And this is really only the beginning. I mean, this is great. The Schomburg, uh, you know, New York Public Library Schomburg Center up here in Harlem, uh, agreeing to let you guys come in here. They were thrilled about it. And you know, you're taking this on the road, though, afterwards, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. After the Schomburg, we are going to the DeSalvo Museum in Chicago and then to the Northwestern Museum in Seattle. And we are in talks with a number of other museums for them to come on board and showcase this in the city. Well, it's such great stuff, and it's so fun to look at. I, I can't imagine, uh, especially like you mentioned, if you have if you have kids to say, oh, this is, these are the cartoons I watched, right? Yeah, it's very exciting. And I think this is a fun exhibition, so we're hoping that people come out, they get to see it, it brings back memories, they'll bring their children and their grandchildren, and also open up a dialogue about you know these cartoons being the first time in uh, animation history, again, where positive images of blacks are being seen on television. Well, Pamela, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. the really fun stuff. Here. Thank you. Pamela Thomas, and of course, all right, so you want more information. Now, the exhibit's going to be here through June, so you've got plenty of time to check it out right here at the Schomburg Center, the New York Public Library Schomburg Center up here at Harlem. It's 135th Street, Malcolm X Boulevard. And if you want to check out some of this stuff online, museumofuncutfunk.com. So great stuff, Pat. i got to say my favorite, I love Franklin from the Peanuts, and of course, Lieutenant Uhura from the uh, Star Trek cartoon. And I love that cartoon. I mean, it was, I mean, it was a little out there, but I still loved it. <laughs> oh, that's right, Pat. It is called Funky Turns 40, Black Character Revolution. And uh, if you think back to the 70s, if you're, you're from my, my generation, uh, well, you think of some of the great cartoons with black characters, of course, Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids, the Jackson 5 cartoon, Josie and the Pussycats, and uh, Josie and the Pussycats in Outer Space, which I never understood why they had to do that. There's no reason that Josie and the Pussycats needed to go into outer space. But let's talk about that later. But yeah, this is a really fun, fun exhibit. And to talk more about it, Pamela Thomas is the curator. And how does all get started? I know that 
you and uh, your business partner, Loreen, uh, collect these. Uh, these are what they call celluloids or cells of uh, these great cartoons, right? Yeah. Yes, uh, we collected them starting about 15 years ago, and uh, we just really thought it was a great idea to um, find the cartoons from the 1970s that had uh, black characters in them and, you know, tell the story of how these cartoons started and what it meant to a generation of children. Yeah, and I mentioned some of them, and obviously we all think of, you know, Bill Cosby's Fat Albert, which was, uh, uh, had a different life lesson almost every week, and they, you know, the, the music and the sports and all the fun stuff. Uh, and then, every, you know, even talking about, like, the Star Trek cartoon with Lieutenant Uhura, which was, uh, she was groundbreaking on regular television as she was in animation, right? Yeah. yeah, these cartoons were groundbreaking for a lot of reasons. First, it was the first time that uh, uh, pop, uh, images of blacks in a positive manner were portrayed in cartoons, so children got to see themselves, as opposed to cartoons that were shown maybe 40 years prior to that, where uh, uh, images of blacks either had uh, elongated faces or exaggerated uh, lips or bulging eyes. So these cartoons were very significant in how uh, blacks were portrayed in them. And uh, you know, we, we, we have something in common is that we both had, you said your grandmother would take you to the garden, so you guys used to sit up and watch Knicks games, and you were a big Harlem Globetrotters fan, and they had a cartoon, too, back in the 70s. Right? Yeah, I love the Harlem Globetrotters, and you know, what, what's really great about that cartoon, it spoke to sportsmanship, and how uh, you could be a team player, and how um, children could learn how to play with one another. And again, these cartoons had fantastic messages, which were really, if you think back, are somewhat re they were revolutionary for their times because a lot of the messages that came out of these cartoons from the 70s are really uh, relevant, relevant to what children are experiencing today. Well, Pamela, thank you, Lorraine, congratulations, great stuff, and uh, look forward to, to, to checking it out more. Thank, thank you. We appreciate it. That's it. Uh, and uh, all right, so if you want more information, first off, it's here at the Schomburg Center in Harlem, uh, part of the New York Public Library, right? Uh, it uh, runs through June, so you have plenty of time to check it out. And uh, all you have to do is, uh, for more information, go to this website, museumofuncutfunk.com. That is uh, uh, Pamela and Levine's website with uh, all the stuff they have. A, they also have some great black exploitation movie posters on there, if you're into that stuff from the 70s as well. So lots of cool stuff, Pat, uh, to check out. Really fun exhibit here. Thank you. See you later. All right. So first, we'll start from the very beginning. So talk talk about your your, your museums. Did you said you were you? What's your background in again? Um, I studied at City College, uh, and I majored in African American history with a minor in education. And uh, my business partner and I started uh, art gallery in two thousand and one uh, in New Jersey, and uh, we had contemporary art, African American art, all types of art, and we bought in pieces of our collection, um, which were 1970s black exploitation movie posters. And one thing led to another, and we just got inspired and wanted to continue to collect. And But prior to that, um, we were collecting uh, Warner Brother uh, and Disney uh, animated cells. And one of the things I was thinking was, I know that there were black cartoons out there. If you can collect a cell from a Disney movie, then you should be able to collect a cell from a black cartoon. And so one thing led to another. We started collecting the animated cells along with the movie posters. And I wanted to find a different medium to collect. It's great that we collect things like the mammy jars and the um, posters that show, or rather depict our history. I wanted to do something that was a little bit out of the box to bring awareness to collecting, to make young people interested in collecting. So that's why we kind of focused on 1970s, and in addition to that, animation cells, movie posters, and comic books, and so on. And for people who may not be familiar with what a cell is, are you A cell what? is a celluloid. It's like a plastic sheet where an animator will draw a scene of a cartoon, and that um, a cell is used under the camera to film a cartoon. So for instance, something like this, which this is actually a limited uh, edition, the, the animator may produce um, hundreds of these to get an actual frame under the camera to film a cartoon. So there were thousands of these that are actually made, and what would happen after each uh, cartoon was developed, they would wash the cell off and reuse the celluloid because at that time they were very expensive. 
And in some cases, they were even thrown away. So for us, it was very important to collect this because one, this is a part of history that um, is a lost art form. I don't think that makes sense. This is a part of history that's a lost art form. Why, why not? Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is a part of um, animation history that's a lost art form in uh, developing cells where you have the animator paint on them. Everything now is computer generated. So that's why it's so important in our minds to collect this, especially for the black cartoons, because a lot of them were just thrown away. Okay. Let me have you step back in here. And <laughs> so, um, so, so you, you, you guys, you and Lorraine, you, you call yourself the Museum of Uncut Punk. So, what's yes. kind of like the? Tell me a little bit about about that and kind of your goal. You know? Well, the goal is is to just collect anything and everything from the 1970s that's funky. So, for instance, we're both big fans of the black exploitation movie era. And we have about um, a 500 plus piece movie poster collection. But what's so exciting for us about collecting the movie posters is the international posters, because the artwork is so much different on the posters. And in addition to that, you, the studios would have an artist come in and the actors would actually pose for the scene in the movie and they would create that, they would sit there and paint that. And they don't do that any, anymore. Everything is a photograph. And you know they either Photoshop it together to put this movie poster together now. So that's a lost art form. And it, and then the movies were so exciting themselves; they were very groundbreaking. At that time, there were over 200 movies that were made, and it was really the first time in cinematic history that you had black actors, actresses, uh, producers, directors, everyone working on films. And although we still make films like that today, but it just wasn't done in that capacity, like in the 70s. Uh, we also um, collect comic books in addition to the animation cells. And our goal is really to focus on the 70s because we think it's the greatest decade ever. <laughs> Coming out of the civil rights uh, movement of the 60s, going into the black power movement of the 70s, where it was really just cool to be black, it was cool to be expressive, it was cool to say what you wanted to say, and just it was a vibrant time. The music was funky, the clothes were you know, loud, everybody had something to say, everybody had a big afro, and it was just a very expressive time in the black experience. And we feel like we've gone from the 60s to the 70s, uh, to the 80s, excuse me, uh, because there's so much in, um, focus on hip hop, and, and not to say that we're not fans of hip hop, but because we grew up in the 70s, that's what we identify with. And we just want to remind people that there were a lot of great things that came out of the 70s. And we were talking before about you know how um, blacks were kind of characterized in animation prior to that. I guess in a lot of ways it was very similar to the way they were, and, and, you know, in, in, in film in general, right? Yes. Uh, you know, it, you know, uh, I guess the Song of the South, right? things mm -hmm. like that, right? You know, it, it, well, there were a number of cartoons um, that are called the Censored Eleven, where the images of blacks are so bad that. Um, Warner Brothers, Universal Films, they can't even cut them to put them, you know, cut out segments to put them on television because it just seems like every frame shows a negative image or a stereotype of image of a black person. So these, those films have been locked away. I mean, you can get them on uh, DVD in some sort of fashion or you can see them on YouTube if they are still being shown. But the images were so derogatory, either the, the, the black character had very big lips or extremely bulging eyes or their body parts were elongated. And the animators at that time did not think they were doing something negative and or racist. They just felt they were capturing in their minds what the character should look like for animation. And that's all well and good. But for me, this is more of something I can identify with. And, um, you know, we just think because this period in, in animation history was just so significant that we're happy to get this story out. And, we, and so, and you talk about obviously, you know, uh, Bill Cosby's Fat Albert, which you know, and then, but that was an, that it didn't just stop there. I mean, it, everyone from Muhammad Ali to the Jackson Five, you know, well-known people, and then characters that we created like Franklin and the Peanuts Gang and, and things like that. Yeah, and you know, the other thing that's really very important, I don't think people. Uh, um, realizes that Bill Cosby, in essence, was really considered the first black animator. Uh, he developed uh, Fat Albert, and it's based on his childhood. Um, he had a, a staff of black animators and other people of color working on this 
uh, project, and in addition to Barry Gordy being the first uh, black person who owned a significant company within the music industry who created films, created the Jackson 5, which was one of his entities. And, you know, we love these cartoons, but the history behind them is also extremely important. And, you know, if you're a collector of animation or a lover of music, you know, and you think about these these cartoons, there is much more than just, wow, this is Fat Albert and Cosby, because I remember that from my childhood. You know, there's Bill Cosby, who is a household name and an institution like Barry Gordy. And they, you know, paved the way for uh, today's artists to create their own cartoons and, and to have success with animation. And, and like, and, you know, when, and there was a lot of the thing, the best part about this was there was a lot of good positive role models coming out of what you, you know, a very tumultuous period in, in, in our history for mm -hmm. white black. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah and, and what's significant about this is that these cartoons dealt with uh, uh, civic duty, per, uh, personal relationships, uh, family issues, uh, children having issues in, in, in school, whether it be lying, cheating, uh, not showing up, um, sportsmanship with the Harlem Globetrotters and how to be a team player. So you had all of these messages coming out. Even uh, uh, Fat Albert and the Cosmic Kids dealt with voting in one of their um, uh, uh, segments. And when you look back on it, you realize how groundbreaking and revolutionary this was because although these are 40-year-old cartoons, all of these messages apply to, what, to what's going on today. Whether it is the issue of voting rights, whether it is the issue of children dropping out of school and and uh, issues at home with uh, children and their parents maybe going through a divorce or, you know, children smoking at an early age. All of these issues were dealt with 40 years ago and they're so uh, relevant to what people are experiencing today. So, you know, you can sit down and watch these cartoons with your children and they can get a life lesson, you know, learned right there in 30 minutes. Um, what do you hope that folks get out of it as they come through? I hope they, first of all, have fun, because this is a fun exhibition, and we wanted to do something, um, you know, that was out of the box and, and kind of strays away from what we typically do as we celebrate Black history. And this is, you know, great that this is opening for Black History Month, but this is an exhibition that can go beyond that. And if, if people come and they enjoy the cartoons and they, they understand the history behind it and they, they can make the connection between the civil rights movement and going into the black power movement of the 70s and understand why that these cartoons were so revolutionary, then we did a very good job in getting that message out. And this, this was specifically uh, time to coincide with Black History Month? You know, it, it really wasn't, but we're glad that it worked out the way that it did <laughs> because I think this is a great uh, entree into black history and then having a different type of conversation about uh, black history uh, from the normal conversations that we have. Not to say that those conversations aren't important, but this is just something a little bit different. Perfect. Thanks, Pat. Sorry, I have something.